ओके सो चैप्टर सेवन इज ज्ञान विज्ञान योग सो एनीबडी रिमेम्बर ज्ञान योग इज विच चैप्टर चैप्टर फोर चैप्टर फोर इज ज्ञान योग नॉ चैप्टर सेवन इज ज्ञान एंड एडिशनली विज्ञान योग ऑल्सो विच इज नॉलेज ऑफ द एप्सोल्यू so in this chapter what does lord krishna say he says um, that uh, he is going to describe his full opulences he is going to talk about his opulences and how he manifests and the nature of krishna consciousness then we'll see four kinds of fortunate people who are who really do um, become attached to krishna and, and are in krishna consciousness then four kinds of people unfortunate people who just don't want to take uh, krishna's refuge Uh, we have done uh, karma yoga gyana yoga ashtanga yoga right now today is gyana vigyana yoga we we'll learn about knowledge of lord's energies surrendering unto lord krishna demigod worship and impersonalism delusion to so we will see knowledge uh, through hearing krishna's energy accept or reject krishna demigod worship and who can become a devotee because see when we talk about gyana so there are two types of knowledge when we talk about knowledge one is spiritual knowledge which is permanent one is uh, material knowledge which is temporary para and apara knowledge para gyan apara gyan like whatever we are learning here in schools colleges universities we will finish our masters also we will finish our engineering then we do our job everything we die then we take another birth are we going to say okay i have last time i have finished my certificate so i have my engineering degree can i have the job no you have to start all over again fresh a b c d but similarly now you have learned suppose you have learned all bhagavad gita bhagavatam all the veda scriptures you have done lot you have done this suktam that suktam ashtanga this one what do you call jagannath ashtakam then you have done uh, narayan suktam narayan upanishad you have learned everything for example then you are done with this life you go you have done your phd and you have done your spiritual knowledge till here when you die and when you take another birth that phd thing becomes zero whereas the spiritual knowledge you will still remember all of it the moment uh, somebody is saying oh you see yeah i am familiar and you will grasp it so quickly and very very early in life you will catch the whole thing because spiritual knowledge is something which will never diminish it will continue but uh, what happens is because of our material desires what we do is we surrender to devatas they give us uh, results which are very temporary because they themselves are very much temporary they can, brahma ji also told hiranyakashipu i can't give you i can't say you can remain amar forever you can live forever because i myself don't cannot live forever right so devatas where do they get their powers from they get their powers from krishna only so here it, the whole bhagavad gita tells us why don't you just come to me directly why you want to you know go indirectly so he confirms in this chapter that he is the ultimate truth and eternal what is the name of bhagavad gita chapter 7 knowledge of knowledge of absolute yes yes let's start shri bhagavan uvacha maya saktamana partha yogam yun janma dashraya असंचयम समग्रम माम यथा ज्ञास्य से तच्छ्रुनु यस अनुप्रिया माता जी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा एवरीवन नाउ हियर ओ सन ऑफ पार्थ अर्जुना हाउ बाय प्रैक्टिसिंग योगा इन फुल कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ मी विद माइंड अटैच टू मी यू कैन नो मी इन फुल फ्री फ्रॉम डाउट हरे कृष्णा हरे सो इट इज ओ सन ऑफ पृथा पृथा इज कुंतीज नेम another name for kunti and partha is arjuna's name so son of pritha means arjun son of kunti arjuna so at the end of sixth chapter what was stated krishna consciousness is the best so that is why what is lord telling here he opens the opening sentences with shri bhagavan uvacha lord the lord is trying talking so what is he saying tachrunu arjuna listen to me because last sentence in last chapter was krishna consciousness and the bhakti yoga is the highest yoga so now lord krishna is saying listen to me there is no greater than krishna so whoever gets the privilege to listen from bhagwan himself you can imagine how privileged he must be right 
the law, uh, Arjuna is so, so, so privileged. He is Naranarayan, right? So we must either learn from Krishna, which we are doing right now. We are listening to Bhagavan Vacha directly or from some pure devotee of Krishna. So in Bhagavad Purana, you know, it is written, once we get that bhakti, you know, we we can get away from the modes of Rajoguna, Tamoguna. We can move on and slowly move on to the platform of uh, Sattvaguna. Because we will stop running after the material. The desires will decrease. You will see the greed, wants, everything decreases. The moment the contamination is gone, we naturally we move to the mode of goodness. And then we get that energy. Where will we get the energy? We are chanting. Every day we are chanting. So through devotion, slowly that we get that energy and we come to understand the Bhagavad Tattva. That is, we come to understand God completely. How can we know Krishna in full, free from doubt? Practicing yoga, bhakti in full consciousness. We have to do bhakti. Okay, we have uh, Lord's incarnations uh, which uh, are free from imperfections. Let's see number one. Who can guess what is that? Which avatar is that? Which incarnation? avatar. Yes, first one. Matsya avatar. Number one, Matsya avatar. Number two. Kurma. Kurma avatar. Number three. Varaha avatar. Varaha avatar. Number four. Narasimha. Number, number five. Vamana. Vamana avatar. Six. Parashuram. Parashuram. Seven. Ram. Lord Ram, yes. Eight. Krishna. Krishna, nine. Buddha. Buddha, ten. Kalki. Kalki avatar, which has not yet been, he has not yet incarnated. So let's see knowledge through hearing. Ways to acquire knowledge is ascending process. We have defects. We need to have faith, which is the essential ingredients. So we have to have the descending process. Ascending process means what? Science works to some level, right? We discover something which is already existing in this world. Because our senses are very imperfect. They are very, very limited. Science is also imperfect. Why? Because it is, it is based on what humans are telling us. And it, humans have their limitations. What are the limitations? We make mistakes. We have cheating propensity. We are under illusion, a lot of illusion. Senses are also imperfect, right? So we are imperfect. Then if we are imperfect, what to do? We must consult somebody who is having perfect authority. From For our life decisions also, we should consult somebody who knows everything clearly. Like you can see, we are completely in illusion. From that side, it appears as if apple is full. But if you come to the other side, you will see it's eaten. So that's kind of illusion only. Then, of course, as he said, we have changing propensity. So even the science who are scientists who are coming out with different, different, they are discovering whatever is existing. Actually, it is all existing. And whatever they are telling, they also have their own limitations, right? So in certain places, we invest our faith. Like when we are going to a doctor and he is going to do surgery upon us, we need to have faith in him. Otherwise, nothing is going to have work out for us. When they give us pills, we eat with faith that it will we will get cured. When we are traveling, whether in a bus or a car or a train or aeroplane, we need to have faith in the driver. Otherwise, difficult. When we go for a haircut also, we have faith. So it is very, very important that we receive knowledge from authority with faith, parampara. So if we can nurture back that faith in our scriptures, then what will happen? These scriptures, these scriptures have been eroded by, by centuries of abuse. Some are gone, some scriptures are torn. And uh, this Brahma Samhita also, you know, only one chapter was found by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he went down south. Just one chapter out of so many chapters, he just found one. Everything has been eroded, gone due to abuse and exploitation. So we need to have faith in our scriptures. We need to nurture back the faith. So descending process to receive authority, uh, knowledge from Parampara. That is very, very important for us. 
ಜ್ಞಾನಂ ತೇಹಂ ಸ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಇದಂ ವಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಶೇಷತಃ ಯಜ್ಞಾತ್ವನೇಹ ಭೂಯೋ ನ್ಯತ್ ಜ್ಞಾತವ್ಯಮವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಎಸ್ ಚಾರು ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಐ ಶಾಲ್ ನೌ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ಅನ್ ಟು ಯು ಇನ್ ಫುಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಬೋಸ್ ಫೆನೋಮೆನಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನ್ಯೂಮೆನಸ್ ಬೈ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ದೇ ಶಾಲ್ ರಿಮೇನ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ನೋನ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಅಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಹಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ರೈಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೊ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ಅನ್ ಟು ಅರ್ಜುನ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ so jnana is knowledge how do we learn how do we get jnana by applying apply what do we apply when we are trying to gain knowledge we apply our mind we apply our senses also and we apply our intellect also then we get some knowledge and then he says i will tell you jnanam and vijnanam also i will tell you so what is vijnana vijnana means practical knowledge wisdom so the knowledge that we gain through spiritual practice the moment we do some practice we are we get direct experience that direct experiential realization is called vigyana like example here is uh, you see honey now honey is kept in a sealed jar now the moment honey is kept in a sealed jar what will happen we know we have heard from authorities we have heard from parents we have heard from everyone that honey is very sweet it's the sweetest thing available in the world for example it's not comparable to any other sweet but how do we know that is the knowledge we have got that it is very sweet now vigyana means what unless we open the jar and taste it we will not get we will not get the experiential realization of the sweetness that is vigyana gyana is knowing that honey is sweet vigyana means tasting it and finding it out for our yours ourselves similarly guru they give us gyana right they are telling us they are giving us everything theoretical knowledge of the scriptures everything is given to us but then what do we have to do we have to practice practice sadhana we have to chant we have to read scriptures we have to practice it so once we have acquired the gyana which would con- so- somehow it will purify our mind by doing uh, by understanding from the guru then the wisdom the knowledge that to self realization slowly some attain very quickly some attain till the end they keep on uh, understanding so in this verse lord krishna is confirming to arjuna that he is going to impart the theoretical knowledge about the supreme divine personality so he will also um, um illuminate his mind that that uh, with the required wisdom that is required for to understand so once knowledge is got he gets the knowledge then there is nothing remaining for him to know let's see what about the what lord krishna says in the next one yes um yes prema kumari mata ji hari krishna hari krishna out of many thousands among men one may endeavor for perfection and of those who have achieved perfection hardly one knows me me in truth yeah hari krishna so many people are running right will all of them reach the finish line together do you think so all of our running marathon okay so now everybody will finish uh, reach the finish line together holding hands do you think so no 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 so some are tired some stay back some are waiting for water some are still jogging some are walking some faint over there but it is only one person who will reach the finish line right so shila prapad explains in his purport he says out of many many thousands of human beings it's probably a rare person who is interested in understanding or knowing what is a soul what is body what is the connection what is the ultimate truth how to attain the divine because we are generally what we are in, in uh, engaged in every day morning we have to get up we are we want to look into the what is the breakfast when to sleep or what to do do you know we are we are in that animal in, instincts food sleep fear and you know um, we are busy engaged uh, engaging our senses in all that hardly anybody is interested in understanding or knowing the divine right so 
Lord Krishna, we have to understand that he is the cause of all causes. He is the Adi Purush, like it is stated in Brahma Samhita. What is it stated in Brahma Samhita? Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vikraha Anadira Adi Govinda Sarvakarana Karanam. He is the cause of all causes, right? Very difficult for non-devotees to know him. We can, nobody can understand Krishna as Yashoda. You know, Krishna likes to know uh, by, by knowing by call, when people call him Yashoda and then Partha Sarati. He likes it, you know, because he, he loves his devotees so much that when people relate him with the devotees, they, he likes it. Sometimes even great deities, you know, they get confused about Krishna. Muhyanti yat suryaha means how is it that you know even perfected souls are unable to know uh, God? The reason is without bhakti, without loving devotion, it's not possible to realize Lord Krishna. It's not, it's very difficult. So, whoever is practicing karma yoga, jnana yoga, ashtanga yoga, they will not be able to understand or know God unless they uh, bring. Bhakti or devotion in their practice. They have to bring that. Then they will know. They will also know. But they have to bring bhakti in their devotion. So Lord Krishna says so many people are there. So many humans are there. But only one among thousands and thousands will come to know him. And he said many, many times in Bhagavad Gita he has stated. He has stated in chapter 8 also that we will be learning tomorrow. He said Purusha Sapar of Partha Bhaktya Labhyastva Nanyaya. He says uh, whoever who is greater than all, who can who can attain him through um, unalloyed devotion, he says. Then then chapter eleven when we'll go, we can see that also bhaktya twananya shakya ahamevam vidh Arjuna. He says Arjuna, by only undivided devotional service can anybody attain me. You know, mm -hmm. can understand me. Eighteenth chapter, he continues continuously is telling about devotion. Bhaktya mama bijanati yavan yeshta asmi tatvataha. One can understand me as I am by only devotional service. So many times he has said, "More, what more do we want to understand?" Right? So let's see what he talks about. Uh, yeah, material dimensions. Uh, yes, let's see. Atmaja Mataji, would you like to read? Hare Krishna. Earth, water, fire, air, either mind, intelligence, and false ego, all together, this eight comprise my separated material energies. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, matter is considered what? God's energy. That's called Prakriti. So, it's divided into eight forms, as you can see here. Body is made up of five elements. What are those five elements? Earth, water, fire, air. Ether, man, ether, right? So, so bhumi apo nalo vayu. These are the five elements. Then, along with it is mano buddhi evacha, ahankar. So, mano is there, man buddhi, which is intelligence, and ahankar, which is false ego. So, bhumi apo nalo vayu kam. Then, man buddhi ahankar. These are his, these eight together are um, the material energy. So five, um, five uh, gross material are earth, water, fire, air, ether, and mind. Uh, ether, ether, sorry, not mind. So these are gross elements with which the body is made up. Then we have mind, intellect, and false ego. So all together make uh, material energy of the Lord, right? And then mind, intelligence, ego, they go with the soul. When we change our body, Mind, intelligence, ego also goes with the body. That is why it's called subtle body, right? It's subtle. You can see in the diagram also the outline one, the blue one, earth, water, fire, air, ether. And then inside ego, then inside that mind, inside that intelligence. And ultimately, it's the soul. So the soul, intelligence, mind, ego, they go to the another body. But the outer body is gone. We burn it, right? So that is vanquished. And he states that these eight elements are part of uh, Maya. So his material energy. Now he is going to describe his, um, yes, superior energy. Let's see that. Harshita Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Besides this inferior nature, O mighty armed Arjuna, there is a superior energy of mind. 
which are all living entities who are struggling with material nature and are sustaining the universe. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. He, uh, he explained eight um, um, material energies that we are uh, eightfold prakriti material energy. He says it is inferior. Now it, he's saying it is inferior because there is something far more superior. What is that? This energy is completely transcendental as compared to the, the lifeless body or the matter you can see. It is what? The jiva shakti, the soul. It, it includes all the living souls of the world. So we have understood that there is a matter which is gross body. It is perishable. Gets, it gets destroyed. Then the individual soul, it is imperishable, cannot be destroyed, right? Then there is, of course, God, uh, the controller of both the body and the soul. If we meditate upon God and then unite with him and we will become more like him, then what will happen? The soul, which will become completely free from this maya, world's maya. So we have to understand we are part and parcel of Krishna. We belong to him. We must go back to him. That is what we have to understand. So if we have come from Krishna, we must follow Krishna. Yes, please. Manohar Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, know for certain that I am both its origin and dissolution. Please continue, Prabhupada. O conqueror of wealth, Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. To me, everything, everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Mataji. Thank you, Prabhupada. So you can see the bubbles in the picture. So many tiny bubbles, big, big bubbles are there. Small bubbles are there. There, You know what that is? Universe. Different, different, numerous, countless universes. Ours is just a tiny one among so many. And everything that is existing over there is a product of matter and spirit. Everything. So living beings are what? God's two energies. One is Jiva Shakti, the sentient energy, the soul, and the Maya which is insentient, insentient, means inanimate, lifeless, lifeless material energy or matter. <laughs> In this whole material realm, all life, whatever you might be seeing, it's a combination of both matter, that eight elements and soul. Now body by itself is lifeless, matter by itself is lifeless. And the soul, it needs a body. Then only it can move around, right? So both together, when they come together, it forms a living being. So material body is developed. Why? Because spirit soul is present in there. That's why we have that. The proof is the child is born. It grows. Then it is growing into a young, young boy. Then adulthood. Then manhood. Then becomes old. Then that. So that is the proof that soul is present. If the soul, you remove the soul and ask the body to grow. Will it grow? No, it won't. Right? So as we always say that we have the power, we have the power to build factories, we have the power to build so many constructions, bridges, skyscrapers we are able to build. But let's ask somebody, can you build the whole new universe? No, it's not possible. With, with, can you ask any doctor to revive a dead body? Not possible. So there is somebody behind it. There is someone. The cause of this big universe is what? Some big soul, that is super soul. And Krishna, the supreme, the cause of all the causes, he is the cause of all these big and so, small uh, souls, right? So Lord Krishna is stating that he is the supreme, he is supreme most in this whole universe because he is the one who is created. He is the one who is sustaining it. He is the one who is going to annihilate the whole thing. It is similar to a beads which is strung in a thread, as you can see here. It can move in its place. God has given us individual, uh, uh, all, all of us have got some independence, right? We can move a little bit. We can do act according to our wish a little bit. But the existence is bound to him. Now, for example, let's see, I have got this Japamala over here. Where is that Japamala? Okay, let me take it out. Okay, so this Japamala over here, it is, it is there, right? And this one, it is... Um, Something is holding these beads. What is it that is holding these beads in this Japamala? What is it holding? Something is holding it, right? Thread. Thread. Yeah, thread. 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 thread is holding. But can you see the thread? 
as such, we cannot see the thread. We see the beads only most of the times, right? Here I can see a little bit of thread, but as such, you cannot see. Then just because I cannot see the thread does not mean that uh, the thread is not there. Thread is there, but if if I if the thread is gone, what will happen to the beads? What will happen to the beads? It will fall off. It will yeah. fall off. The thread, thread will scatter. It will go. It will fall off. Separate, right? Same way. Someone is holding. Someone is holding the whole universe together. Someone is doing all this. Someone is making the sun to rise, the moon to um, uh, rise, sun to set, planets in, in its own place, not falling off on each other, not crashing into each other. Someone is doing it. Someone who is greater. Someone who is greater is doing it. But we cannot see him. Why? Because we don't have the quality. We don't have the divya chakshu to see him. But if the thread is broken, all beads will scatter. Same way, if Krishna is not there, everything will scatter. Everything will gone. Everything will be gone. Just because we cannot see him does not mean he's not there. Truly, really we cannot see him. As I said, if the sun, uh, clouds cover the uh, sun, does not mean the sun is not there. We cannot see him. Same way Krishna is there. We want to see Krishna. We need to have the love for Krishna. Call him with a lot of love and you see Krishna will come. Right? <laughs> Whenever I, I don't, I'll, for lack of exam, great examples, I tell that the topmost person in your uh, factory will be a CEO or a, in a university will be a dean. Right? So they, they are the topmost. There is nobody superior to them. They are the top. Similarly, there is nobody equal to uh, or anyone superior to Lord Krishna. So that is why we need to understand our, our vision, how to improve our Divya Chakshu by hearing, Shravanam. That is the process. If What to hear? To see the unseen. For that, we need to have that proper hearing. If we, if we, do, we should not try to see, our, see God with this material eyes. We need to do, chant, work, read, Study in such a way, work in such a way that God will want to see us. He con is ko ye banda itna devotional hai. Let me go and check it out. Who is he? Like when I always say, whenever we are in a temple, we are rushing into each other, crashing into each other, pushing each other, just to go right in front so that we can see God. But the moment we go there, do you think God wants to see you? You have after pushing so many people, God will want to see you. We need to ask ourselves. Does God want to see us? Is the question. We want to see God. Very good. But does God want to see us? It is better instead of pushing everyone, work in devotion, have that bhakti in you. Then who knows? Lord may want to see you even if you are standing right at the end of the line. Something will happen and the, the pandit will make sure that you are right in front and you are standing there for a while. That is going to happen if you have that devotion in you. But, you know, that is the question we need to ask ourselves. Yes, please. Uh, who will read now? Dharani Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. O son of Kunti, Arjuna, I am the taste of water, the light of the sun and the moon. The syllabi Om is the Vedic mantras. I am the sound in ether and ability in man. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. So what does Lord Krishna say in the previous verse? He said he is the original, he is the sun, sun sustainer, he is the annihilator, everything. He is the basis of everything. Just because we cannot see does not mean that he is not there. Now he is continuously telling and explaining also what in the next four verses from 7.8 to 7.11, continuously is explaining. So he says, let's take up. We have learned that water, rasoham apsu, water. Water is, we have learned that it's odorless, colorless, tasteless. But in spiritual sense, it has taste. So he says, he is rasoham apsu kaunteya. He is the taste of water. Like when we put some solid food on our tongue and there is no water, no saliva to touch it. We won't get the taste of that food. The moment the saliva touches that solid food, we get that taste. Right? So Lord Krishna is saying, he is the taste of water. Who can separate the taste of water from water? Right? Lord Krishna is saying, he is the taste in water. He is the core. He is the intrinsic property of water to carry the taste of all substance. That's the core. Right? That, that is the nature of water. The moment water touches, it will give us that taste. Without water, there will be no taste. So uh, let's see. 
um, whenever we i will you come to my house i offer you some juice you are tired you are it's scorching hot outside now summer is going on scorching hot you come sweating and wet and all and i i give you some milk shake and you drink it of course you say thank you you drink it and you are very thankful about it but after that you will put it down and you say then can i have a glass of water please i'm really thirsty and the moment i give you nice cool water after drinking you say yeah nothing better than water that is what water is right so water is very very you feel blissful then lord krishna says prabhasmi shashi surya yo raso hum ap su kaun te ya prabhasmi shashi surya yo he is he is uh, sun and the moon he is everything you know wherever whenever you look at the sun say lord krishna you are so great whenever you see the moon you should be able to see krishna you should be able to see krishna anywhere and everywhere pranav sarva vedeshu shabda ke paurusham rishu so there's so many mantras which start with om right so he is the syllable om anybody knows the mantras with om vedic mantras have you pata ji om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya then om namat Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Uh, then, Guy Trimantri says, "Yes." Om Gayatri Mantra. Gayatri Mantra is what? Om Bhur Bhuvaswaha Kshurutarure Nambhuri Nasadini Yona Prayodaya. Then, Om Namah Narayana. Yeah. And Om Tat Sat. Yes. Om Ganesha and Namah. So many everywhere there is Om 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 Om, and Lord Krishna says He is Om. Pranava Sarva Vedeshu Shabda Ke Paur Shamra Shi says I am the Om. That is why there is no Om in Hari Krishna Maha Mantra because Krishna says Pranava Sarva Vedeshu Shabda Ke Paur Shamra Shi. He is the Om and He is already there in Hari Krishna four times. So that is why no need to you know have any rules. If if it is Om, you need to have lot of uh, rules you have to take bath and then only you can do all those any chanting which starts with om but hare krishna ma mantra four times krishna 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 and krishna says i am om so you can see krishna everywhere because he is the ultimate source of all the energy let's see what all he is in see he is the taste in water he is the light in moon and sun he is om in vedic mantras he is sound in ether he is ability in man he is fragrance in earth just imagine he is the heat in the fire he is the life of all that lives penance of all ascetics he is the original seed right he is the father of all then he is intelligence among all the intelligent that is why you keep wondering how come these bill gates and this einstein and this uh, this uh, who who else uh, invented whatever uh, the ios and uh, bill gates had done windows steve jobs all these people why are they so intelligent right we are using all their products they have made it so user friendly we are enjoying it also but it is only because of god god's plan he develops one such person's intellect so much so that you know they those people come and they help us and they save us from all these chaos right then he is the uh, prowess of all the powerful men they he gives them some people skill expertise bravery in these powerful men that is why they become so powerful strength he is serene he is sublime he gives strength to people that empowers them so that they become very strong and then sex life not contrary to religious principles means what lord krishna says within the institution of marriage sexual activity should be undertaken according for procreation which is means having babies and all but it should be according to scriptural injunctions not um, you know according to your whims and fancies whenever you want wherever you want whichever way you want that will be called beastly or animalistic that's not according to what then lord krishna is not the sex life in you sex life also is krishna only if it is followed according to the religious principles so after describing all his material energy everything now lord krishna says very difficult to overcome the maya
this divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it hari krishna hari krishna you can see in the picture the boy is drowning right and if you are also when we are, when we are swimming or when we are in the ocean something happens and we are drowning and we don't know what to do and we are looking up for help and suddenly we see a helicopter coming and helping us out and survival team has come to help us out who will you feel oh thank god i have sur- I escaped the bad time same way when we are swimming in this material ocean having loads and loads of miseries and we are thinking oh lord what to do and suddenly lord comes in his garuda uh, this uh, vahan garuda vahan and he is sitting and is coming on his garuda vahan and he is coming and holding extending his hand and asking hold my hand i will save you from this material world you can cross this material world because it is very very difficult to cross this material world only with love and devotion towards krishna will help us and then he will take care of it right so if it is so impossible to cross this material nature then what how to get how to overcome this maya that question comes and the second line answers this question mame vaye prapadyante maya me tam tarantite means what lord krishna says those who will surrender to me by my grace i will make sure mayam etan tarantite i will make sure that you smoothly swim across the ocean of this material existence i will make sure that you come to me easily you will cross it then so easy to defeat maya if it is so easy then why is it that we are not able to do why is it that we again and again and again fall into the trap of maya lord krishna says that human mind you know it is influenced by maya so if we just make our own self uh, effort by self effort it's not possible you know so many gyanis are there so many karmis are there ascetics are there they cannot successfully control their mind on their own they need to have that bhakti devotion has to be added in it like right? i always give example of a dog like in, a, in my friend's place and if i i go to visit her any time and every time whenever i go i never dare to enter the the gate because there is an alsatian dog in the house and i'm damn scared of dogs so i will just stand outside the uh, door and i'll uh, i don't know what to do and the dog is standing right in front of me and just ready to eat me up <laughs> so what would i do i'll just take my friend's name please come and then when i shout her name she would come and she would say, come on sit down it will tell its dog to sit then it will sometimes put the you know leash try to uh, make it go in one side and the dog will listen to her right and then slowly she will open the door and i'll go inside so because i don't have any choice i had to call her name right then only the dog will come under control or not not on me. if i say please go inside i want to come the dog is not going to listen to me it will only listen to its master so just for example sake i am telling the dog is like maya and my friend is like krishna and i am the living entity so the maya is not going to listen to me it is going to eat me up <laughs> but when my friend krishna says hey come on move my it's my friend coming in it will listen so we are in the clutches of maya material energy we are, material energy is maya is under krishna but it will keep troubling us if we want to go so we have to keep move because it will keep troubling us so that we move towards god then only will call hey krishna help me and then krishna will come and help me by our own effort we cannot defeat maya if i want to go and hold that alsatian dog it's going to bite me right i am not able to do it we cannot defeat so the moment i surrender and i'll say krishna come help me the krishna will hold put some leash on maya and pull it no 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 don't disturb that that's my devotee okay <laughs> so the next question that comes to our mind if it is so easy to defeat maya why is it that we are not able to do so lord krishna will tell us why some people cannot why some people cannot we will see that yes please uh, who will read anybody else who wants sushma mata ji hari krishna hari krishna mata ji who rejects krishna those miscreants who are grossly foolish lowest among mankind 
whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons do not surrender unto me hare krishna so why do we fail lord krishna says there are four categories of people who do not want to surrender only to him namam durshkriti no mudha prapadyante naradhama maya mayaya apahrita gnana asuram bhava mashita so mudha they are foolish they, they are like hard working beast of burden they want to enjoy whatever i am earning i want to enjoy what krishna what are you talking about they have nothing to do with supreme lord <laughs> it's like donkey you know donkey just so, so on working 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 it has it doesn't know anything this is a position of a foolish fruitive worker who does not know whom he should work for so then next this is the mudha he is working like this like an ass then comes naradhama they are nara means human dhama adhama adhama means lowest lowest of mankind they have knowledge they have everything they have that awareness also very lazy they don't want to adhama nature low nature they don't want to surrender like jaga and mada in this picture as you can see they were you know once chanting the name of krishna nityananda prabhu he was just he was attacked by this jaga and madai madai they were in drunken state and madai what did he do he just threw an earthen pot at uh, nityanand prabhu and that cut his forehead nityanand prabhu you know he, he he could have said something very bad but what did he say mere shish kol shir kana tai bole ke prem de bona in in bengali he said shall i stop giving you love just because you have hit me with an earthen pot that's what he said imagine that kind of uh, devotee nityanand of course he is nityanand prabhu as soon as chaitanya mahaprabhu heard of this episode he was very angry he wanted to kill jagan madai he took out his divine chakra also but nityanand prabhu he begged he said no 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 please forgive them you know and later on of course they became his uh, devotees and the next kind of who is mayaya mayaya pa hrita gnana so the maya men who are in illusion like scientists deluded intellects they are very proud of their knowledge their intellect they have no faith in the scriptures they have no faith in the whatever sant people are teaching saints are teaching they don't want to understand anything they don't want to surrender to god like you know philosophers poets all these scientists and all because that illusionary energy is misguiding them so they want to disobey maya ya par pratak gnana that gnana is in illusion and the next one is demonic nature they are asuram bhava mashita a demonic nature they are aware god is there what but what happens is is uh, they will still work against him jan bush they don't want to because of their demonic nature they do not like god they don't want to listen to his glories also and uh, they will just try to disturb and they like what hiranyakashipu did he said everyone has to pray to me not to lord vishnu that's what he said surrender to god is not at all expected from them like ravana and hiranyakashipu and all right okay who are the four kinds of men who do not surrender to krishna ji mata ji foreign men men whose knowledge is stolen and is atheistic yes correct and then there are four kinds of people who want and who accept krishna let's see who are they um taru dharni mata ji would you like to read yes mata ji O best among the Bharatas, Arjuna, four kinds of pious men render devotional service unto me: the distressed, the desirer of wealth, the inquisitive, and he who is searching for knowledge of the absolute. Hari Krishna, Mata Ji. Hari Krishna. In previous verse, he told four kinds of people who do not surrender. Now here he is saying who take refuge, who accept Krishna. So who are the ones who surrender to Krishna? Arth. Arth means distress. Distress. Distress means you know. lot of miseries they are going through lot of hard time and whenever you are going through hard time difficult time and you are not able to cope up with that difficult time what do you do you surrender and you immediately go to god please kuch to karo something you must you have to do something to me you know to protect me please help me out that's when you go right who did that draupadi when there was cheer haran going on in the, in the court she immediately completely surrender to govinda she said govinda you are the only one who can help me and he came and he did that right and then next one is jignasu jignasu is the one 
who who knowledge seekers they are inquisitive they have that inquisitiveness and they want to e eagerly want to advance in spiritual uh, uh, they want to learn about uh, opulence of god and who god is like um, when maharaj parikshit uh, abhimanyu's son he was inquiring from shukadev goswami he wanted to know parikshit maharaj said i have seven days only left in my life i want to know i want to know who is god what is god his glories and all so many rishis were there they all were inquisitive they were all came when shukadev goswami started telling uh, parikshit maharaj the bhagavatam they all came they were so inquisitive they were all sitting listening listening shravanam is the best thing they were listening they were very eager to hear then artharthi artharthi means those who want some money wealth wealth worldly positions power they are very clear i want this 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 and this you know i want a great house maybe 1 million dollars or maybe one one house car bmw whatever so they take shelter of god because of that because they are convinced that only god can provide me with all these bends and all that whatever king dhruva king dhruva he was very sad because when he wanted to sit on the father's lap a step mother told no only my son can sit uttam can sit not you so what he was very sad he went to his mother suniti he said mother what to do she said no only god can help you so then he goes and he did he does meditation after narad muni gives him um, the mantra to do that and after doing it when lord vishnu comes what did he ask he asked for the for the kingdom he wanted to become really much more powerful than his father but of course once the devotion grew once he reached that stage he realized that you know that god possessed priceless jewel of divine love and what he was asking it was like broken pieces of glass <laughs> so of course uh, pleased with his devotion god gave him his darshan god gave him um, you know the, he asked him to rule for so many years together he gave him all that but yes dhruva maharaj later on realized also but he was artharthi he went to uh, did uh, devotion for that then comes gyani those who are of course situated in knowledge they are the souls they know the truth they know that they are part and parcel of god they they know that uh, god is supreme they uh, engage in devotion all the time and what is their um, intention it is to serve him it is to love him in devotion so lord krishna says that they are the these are the four kinds of devotees and the great sages you know they are always anxious um, to do good to other people you can see so many great gurus are there all these great gurus they are always working for the welfare of the people you know even in namisharanya shokan maharishi all those rishis were there they were doing yagnyas for the welfare of the human kind not for themselves okay which of these men go to krishna to render service all of the above all of the above yeah. all of the above correct 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 okay picture number 1 anybody remembers whether what what four category will picture number 1 uh, gender moksha first one the gender moksha artha artha the elephant was in pain so it was artha very good artha yes correct excellent picture number 2 draupadi distressed distressed yeah distressed correct picture number 3 devki mm. no that is shukadev goswami in the in the womb of his mom uh, vatika shrila vyasdev's uh, wife he didn't want to come out only he said i am not coming out this maya i don't want to come into this maya he remained in mother's womb for 16 long years after that lord krishna had to come come on come out i am giving you solace that maya will not touch you that's when shukadev goswami came out of the womb of his mom and straight away started walking towards the forest <laughs> hari krishna vyasadev's son shukadev goswami number 4 number 4 jignyasu jignyasu maharaj parikshit wanted to know about lord why so jig uh, wealth the desire of wealth prala that is dhruva maharaj dhruva maharaj dhruva maharaj Dhruva Maharaj wanted what? Kingdom. 
kingdom so he is yes, unhappy well, and he was distressed also very sad also right father was not allowing him to sit on his lap so art also unhappy also. then number 6 Three one. 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 Three one.
surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulation of worships according to their own nature. Continue, please. Uh, yes, uh, I am in everyone's hearts uh, as the super soul. As soon as one desires to worship the demigods, I make his faith steady so that he can devote he can devote himself to some particular deity. Hare what is Lord Krishna telling Hare Krishna? Lord Krishna is telling over here that people they worship devatas, right? They 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 want something. Material, we are living in this material world, we are having so many problems. So we keep asking for something or the other. And he says as per, uh, to attain some material benefits, right? Like uh, we, I say, prime minister of the country, he appoints different, different ministers for different, different departments. Locally also, we have chief ministers and all. They have some powers locally, right? And they do, they can get, do some favor for us as because with whatever power it is there within their jurisdiction, they can do, which is beyond them, they cannot, right? Their ultimate power rests in the hands of prime minister. Like you can say CEO, of a company, CEO will have managers under him. They have powers locally. They can do some interviews. They can appoint some workers, maybe grant them some promotion and increment also for, for certain level. But ultimately, what do they have to do? They, they have to make a file of all the increments and promotions they want to give and they have to go to the CEO. The managers will have to have a meeting with the CEO for, for approval. Without CEO's permission or signature, nobody can get any increment. So indirectly, who is given promotion and increment? CEO, right? Similarly, Lord Krishna also appoints these devatas. They are for administrative purposes. They are all working for God's creation. They derive their powers from God. They are not independent of him. Ultimately, they take the files and go to God only. So they can bestow some wishes, boons to the devotees, material things, which are under their control. If, they, if I go to a devta and say, can I be eternal forever? I don't want, I want moksha, liberation. I don't want to come back to this material. They cannot give because they themselves are not free uh, from the cycle of birth and death, right? So whatever is within their jurisdiction, they can grant. That's it. They're also souls like us. But they have attained that position because of their pious credits that they have from previous lives. If we can, if we can do it, we can also become devtas, right? And the moment the pious deeds depletes, they have to come down to the earth. But uh, celestial gods are also uh, perishable. Only Lord Krishna is eternal. CEO, managers, they get, you know, promotion. But that's it. That, that power is there. Ultimate is CEO's uh, jurisdiction. So when Lord Krishna, when they, he finds people worshipping the devatas, he says, okay, they are, they are trying to ask him for some material desires. He says, okay, let me just help. So how CEO signs the, okay, you want to give this much increment to them? Okay, I approve. Sometimes he says, no, no, that's a lot of increment. No, no, I don't agree with that. And he'll cut and he'll give a little less. And we wonder why this Devata gave us so little. <laughs> so, you know, he gives them and then he steadies their faith. And uh, Lord Krishna, what does he do? He Those who are in true knowledge, who are engaged in the highest and most beneficial kind of Shraddha, they worship Supreme Lord. Then we can sometimes get this uh, question, you know, why Lord Krishna is creating faith in people towards uh, these devatas? If he says that is why you don't come to me, why, why is he not, uh, why is he giving them faith? Why is he studying their faith if it is not so appropriate, right? So we can see the example of a toddler. What do they do? They play with the, with the toys, right? As if it's a real person. They're showing love, affection. They'll give them some water. They will try to, oh, it's feeling cold and it will put, put some blanket on it. As parents and grandparents, we are aware. We are aware of child's innocence. Let me encourage them to play. We are not saying, hey, it's a toy. What are you doing? We don't say that. We'll, we encourage them to play. Why? Because we want them to develop qualities. What qualities? Love, care, effect, affection towards other people. Those are the values we are want to inculcate in them. These qualities will help children become socially responsible when they grow up. Similarly, our eternal parent, Lord Krishna, he is aware. He knows we are ignorant. When he sees that we are engaged in worship of so-and-so devta for material gains, he says, okay, let me study their faith. He knows with experience, slowly we will, with evolution of the soul, we will acquire the true knowledge, true wisdom, and we will know 
who is who, and then we'll ultimately surrender to him. If we get overcome by material desires and wants to surrender to demigod, what do we do? We follow the rules and regulations of worshipping that particular demigod. Excellent. Very good. Why does Krishna know all our desires? Because he is the super soul living he in the super soul. Excellent. Very good. Why devotional service to Supreme Lord and worship of a demigod cannot be on the same platform? Because worship of demigod is material and devotional service to Supreme Lord is spiritual. Excellent. Too good. Too good. Very nice. Hare Krishna. Excellent. Yes. Uh, who do I long? Uh, Manohar Prabhuji, would you like to read? Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Endowed with such a faith, he seeks favor of a particular demigod and obtains his desires. But in actuality, these benefits are bestowed by me alone. Continue, Men of small intelligence worship the demigods, and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods. But my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet. Hare Krishna. So Lord Krishna again is saying same thing that devatas do not have the capacity to fulfill the material desire. They can only grant wishes if God permits it. Only if CEO will sign in, uh, give the alliance, then only labate to obtain. Devotees with mediocre understanding, they may think that they have obtained this whatever desire from the devata. But no, it's not true. Unless and until the CEO grants it, the, the manager also cannot give it actually. Manager will say, he will recommend. He will recommend, okay, this person should get this much increment. But ultimately, CEO has to sanction. So it's it's not Devata. It's the God who is facilitating everything. Lord Krishna is explaining to Arjuna, whatever you will aim for, you will get that only if you worship Devata, you will go to Devata's planet, right? Up after death. So Lord Krishna is saying, whereas if they are devoted to me, they will come to my loka. This small thing they are not able to understand feels Lord Krishna. So the question again comes, when reaching God is the ultimate destination, then why God is steadying our faith? Right? So uh, whenever we have kids, they are studying in different, different classes. When they are in primary school, they, they will, will, if they are in grade, uh, say grade one or grade two, will they remain in that grade forever? No. no. Once they finish grade one, they have to go to grade two and they are promoted to the next grade. Once primary school is done, then they go to college and like that, so on. They outgrow, right? They keep moving higher and higher. Similarly, if we worship Devata, that is primary level. Then we have to outgrow that, move on. We go to Bhagavad Gita. Now we are reading Bhagavad Gita. We know more now. Bhagavad Gita is not for, for a primary school person. It is not for those who wish to attain Devatas or godly planets, these Devata planets. For higher purpose, seeking a higher purpose. Devdas are perishable. The fruits, whatever they are going to give us, is also perishable. Once we understand that, that Krishna is imperishable, God is imperishable, whatever fruit he will be giving us is also imperishable. So if we worship eternal form of God upon death, what will happen? We will go to his abode and we'll stay there forever in his service. When we want to worship a demigod, what does Lord Krishna do? He gives us faith to worship that deity. Exactly. Very nice. Okay. Yes. Please, um, Charu Mataji, would you like to read? Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. I am never manifest to the foolish and unintelligent. For them, I am covered by my eternal creative potency, yoga maya, and so the deluded world knows me not who who am born and who follow me. O oh Arjuna, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present, and all things that are yet to come. Mm -hmm. I also know all living entities, but me no one knows. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So Lord Krishna had mentioned previously material energy, he told. Then he also told about his uh, spiritual energy, soul, Jiva Shakti, right? And now he's talking about third most important, which is, he says, Naham Prakasha Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samavritaha Yoga Maya. So he says, Supreme Lord uh, Sri Vishnu has three main energies. What is that? Yoga Maya. 
So yoga maya is what? Internal potency, superior energy, the souls, and then material energy, the maya. So we have material energy, the soul energy, which is superior energy, and, and Lord's own uh, internal potency, which is yoga maya. So in the even in, in the present, if, if Lord comes to me and he knocks the door and he says, hi, hello, how are you? Hare Krishna. I will not be able to recognize him because we don't have that divine eyes to see him, to recognize him because he is, God is completely covered by yoga maya. His, his concealed, his divine form, transcendental form, we cannot recognize. We don't have that eligibility also. Unless and until we gain that eligibility, we cannot say. So in this verse, Lord is declaring that he knows past, he knows present, he knows future. We cannot, we are, we don't even know what happened one hour ago. We forget, keep forgetting. He is all knowing, right? He's omniscient. He remembers, he keeps record of whatever we have done in the past, present, future, whatever, or each and every small little thought also you have thought. Right now, sitting here in Bhagavad Gita class, you are thinking something God has noted it down, you know, and he has been noting it down infinite lifetimes. So when, when Krishna was present, actually very few people knew that he was Supreme Personality of God. Like Bhishma Dev knew, Pandavas knew, few others. Only very few knew, not everyone. He did not reveal himself to, to non-devotees or any other common man. To whom does Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, reveal himself as the reservoir of all pleasure? Only for his devotees. Only for, for his devotees. devotees he reveals. Yes, correct. Yes, please. Um, Sushma Mataji, would you like to read? Hare Krishna Mataji. O sign of Bharata, O conqueror of the fob, all living entities are born into delusion, bewildered by dualities arising from desire and hate. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada explains. We are supposed to be the servants of the Lord. That's all. Because we have come from Krishna. He is our father. We are supposed to serve our father. He is Sarvalok Maheshwaram. But because of duality, that is uh, ignorance, we think that, uh, you know, Supreme Personality of Lord is also having, he is like human being only. Material energy is created with material energy. That is what, uh, you know, our misfortune. So, because that is why we are dwelling in dualities. Some dishonor, honor, misery, happiness. He is Indian, he is American, woman, man, pain, pleasure. This is my wife, this is my house, this is my fan, this is my laptop. Everything is, you know, these dualities are going on. Of del We are completely in del delusion. So those who are deluded by dualities, they are completely foolish. And then they cannot understand God. Why is one covered by um, uh, illusion is because... It is due to desire and the hate that we have. We need to remove both of it. No envy should be there. Yes, please. Sadi bhuta di daivam maam sadi yagyam cha ye vidu prayana kale picha maam te vidu yukta cheta saha. Devjani Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Those who know me as the Supreme Lord, as the governing principle of the material manifestation, who know me as the one underlying all the demigods and as one sustaining all sacrifices can with steadfast mind understand and know me even at the time of death. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Lord Krishna, what is he saying here? He says those enlightened souls who know him and that devoted to him at the time of death, they are in complete consciousness. They know what they are doing. And such devotees, they will attain Goloka Vrindavan. But how to remember God? At the time of death, it's not easy. It's very difficult. It's a painful journey. It's so difficult. God knows whether we'll be in coma or whether we'll be in coma or we will be in some kind of delusion, pain. In that pain, how to remember him? So answer that is given over here is constantly think of Krishna. It's not that, okay, death ke time pe na, I will think of Krishna. Okay, no, that's not going to happen. So Lord Krishna says that those enlightened beings who are filled with devotion to God, their mind, intellect, everything is surrendered to Krishna only. So their body is what it becomes. It's beyond pain and pleasure. Even at the time of death, they're thinking about the Lord. What is happening to the body? They're above that. So naturally, they'll be promoted to Lord's uh, abode. 
so this whole seventh chapter is particularly explaining how we can become completely in krishna consciousness right so let us where whatever whatever we have been doing so far forget about all that we will begin wherever we are right now we will begin because it's never too late to start any spiritual journey right so that we can go back to godhead let's see what uh, what was chapter 7 through hearing we get get knowledge ascending process is not possible because we have four limitations which is cheating propensity illusion we commit mistakes and senses are imperfect so we need to learn uh, get that knowledge through descending process through bona fide parampara then we learnt about krishna's energy he is the essence of everything he is all powerful then we learned accept or reject krishna who rejects krishna who are grossly foolish lowest of man can deluded speculators professed atheists who accepts krishna the distressed desire of wealth inquisitive one who is searching for absolute truth then we learned about demigod worship why do we do it because we have a lot of desires and we are less intelligent and what is the result we get temporary limited results and we go back to that planet and who can be a devotee who has prior pious credits from previous birth they have not incurred any sins and devotional service with determination पंचकल्पतरूप्यष्ट कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण थैंक यू सो मच एवरीवन